Uh, yes, my name is Greg DeLon. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it's a real pleasure to be here. It's been amazing to meet some of the other folks that are uh, guests this week for Catalyst Week. I've been thinking about it for a while, really looking forward to being here. And I've also really been looking forward to getting to know a broader uh, piece of the community it, and those of you that have chosen to be here this evening. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is uh, your role in this, the community's role, and some of the things that we've heard about before, um, experiments like free space and other sorts of breakthroughs and innovations that you're really a part of. So Sir, uh, Sir David Attenborough is a naturalist who talks about the idea of that human natural selection has basically come to an end ever since we've arrived at the ability to, to raise 95 to 99 percent of our, our babies. So what's going on in the world is a new type of evolution, a cultural evolution. Today we heard from Vanessa In, who talked about a new sense of empathy and connection in the world, which is a part of this sort of cultural evolution. And you all are part of that. The Downtown Project's part of that sort of evolution that's going on for how people are interacting. In the spring of 1963, my mother was home with three children, and her youngest infant, was, who was nine months old, was really uh, sick with the flu, and she wasn't sure what to do. So she called the family doctor in uh, New Orleans and uh, explained the symptoms, and the doctor suggested that she immediately take the infant to the hospital. She didn't have a car, so Dr. Boudreau, the family doctor, drove across the Mississippi River at the end of the day and came and immediately made an assessment of uh, the, the infant and uh, diagnosed the infant with uh, spinal meningitis and drove the entire family to the hospital where uh, we were immediately, ad immediately admi admitted and they essentially told my mother and then my father that there was not a very good chance that I was going to make it through the night. And if I did, I was probably going to be severely disabled. Well, I made it through the night, and as a result, I'm here to talk to you uh, this evening. Now, if you think about it, there's probably a, a lot of you in the audience that, because of medical breakthroughs and modern science, are also here, and in a different age, in a different time, you wouldn't be here. And here we are as part of a cultural evolution that is going on all over the world, but is really one of the most exciting pieces is going on right here that you're a part of. So in my own cultural ev evolution and the experiences that I've had in my life, I've had the chance to live all over the world, travel all over the world. I've traveled to over 50 countries. Uh, I've lived in uh, about uh, half a dozen different cities in North America and Europe. Uh, I've spent extended periods of a month to three months in uh, about a dozen places around the world. And as a result of that, I've had these immersive experiences in different cultures. I've also had the chance to uh, learn uh, five different languages and fluent in three languages, which I mentioned because these are windows into other cultures and understanding how different people live and a part of the transparency and the connectivity that we're experiencing in this day and age. So what, what I'm starting to try to talk about here is how these models and, and new ideas around connections are rippling throughout the world and giving us new access and ideas into uh, uh, these, these different cultures that we're dealing with. So in my own professional transformation and growth, I've gone through a simil similar transformation in terms of starting with architecture at the smallest scale and then growing into site planning and landscape architecture, then getting into urban design, urban planning, and more and more into policy, and economics, and culture, and environment, and, and, and contextualizing all these different pieces that are part of the innovations that are going on in the world and opportunities to adapt and uh, think of new ways to do environmental design, cultural design, culture hacking, and civic policies for development. Michael Dertuzzo of MIT talks about innovation as a creative idea that meets a pressing human need. So in spite of all these wonderful innovations that are going on in the world, there's still a tremendous amount of problems that we have that we need to address as, as humanity. There's over 3 billion people in the world 
that don't have access to uh, basic uh, 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 sanitation services. There's 2.6 million people that uh, don't have access to clean water. 760 million adults that are illiterate. 1.5 million children that are, mal that are malnourished. We're already at 50% of the population of the globe living in cities. By 2030, it's gonna be 60%. So fundamentally, the issues that we're facing are urban issues. And that's an opportunity because we can concentrate our resources in urban areas and use urban areas as laboratories for solving the problems that we need to address. What this is creating is a new sense of autonomy and cooperation in the world. Technologies are allowing us to connect, Individuals are, are understanding what's going on in other parts of the world, and we're able to pool our resources. So some of the exciting ideas that Mike Zuckerman is talking about are new opportunities to, to pool the resources of the world and start to address these critical issues. Some of the, the, the breakthroughs in terms of companies and new technologies that are going on are represented here and uh, related to what Jeremy Rifkin talks about in his book, The uh, Third Industrial Revolution, where he talks about lateral power and distributed capitalism as new ways of uh, doing business, but also giving people access to new technologies and creating greener cities and smarter cities based around uh, renewable e energy sources and uh, uh, distributed production models. So if we look, uh, looking at some of the examples here, Cisco Systems and Meeting of the Minds is a group that's focusing on smart cities. Uh, free space we talked about as a, uh, as a new model for how to use uh, underutilized spaces. We have orga uh, organizations like Philips that are corp corporations that are supporting projects like the Bay Lights Project for civic art. We have sharing economy models uh, like Scoot and Zipcar that are, uh, that, are, that are opening up a whole new way to uh, share underutilized resources. Yertle is another uh, sharing economy leader. TaskRabbit gives you the ability to outsource basic tasks in your world. And then educational platforms at Stanford, at the Presidio, at MIT. So opportunities to learn online for either for free or for ext extremely economical uh, uh, programs where people can gain access to, to information. Co-working models and co-fabrication models like the Hub and Tech Shop where people can get access to uh, human capital of other people that are there working near or tools for building their prototype. And technologies like Square that allow, allow you to do online payment platforms that allow you to, to uh, grow your business anywhere. So these are a lot of different ways and technologies that are giving us the opportunity to connect and work together on these sorts of issues. Cities, again, are this opportunity in terms of having access and feedback loops for data, big data, smart city technology that, that allows us to uh, be, create transportation models, transportation systems that are more effective, give people access to, again, co-working spaces and resources that they need to start to work on these sorts of problems, having, uh, working on greener buildings, smart buildings, and sharing all that data and, and sharing it across cities and across cultures so that we can get those best practices out there and as a culture, as humanity, start to uh, address these problems that, that, uh, that, that we need to work on. So Burning Man and the, the ephemeral Black Rock City is a great example of one of these cultural revolutions where uh, this is a city that only exists for about six days. So last year there was, uh, there was over 70,000 people there and, and this was an opportunity for creative types and tech people and entrepreneurs to go out there and, and show what they'd been working on all year, bringing together tremendous amounts of human capital, talent, and, and blood, sweat, and tears that they had put into something that only exists for six days, but share that with the world, and then it all disappears, and there's basically leave no mark out on the, uh, out on the playa. So it's an excellent example of what we're capable of, and that message now is going out into the world to share those lessons so that other cities can, can uh, benefit from the, the lessons that are being learned. And of course, here the downtown project and what Zappos and Tony Shea 
uh, is doing is a phenomenal example of a, of a corporation that's investing in the local community and, and doing everything possible to, to create opportunities for new technologies, entrepreneurs, but also uh, uh, civic art, uh, co-working spaces, new building technologies, all kinds of amazing things, and fundamentally coming at it from a private sector standpoint. These are essentially what people are talking more about in terms of living systems. So we're learning from biology, we're learning from, from ecosystems, and this is where the idea of innovation ecosystems comes to play. So these are the different pieces that come together uh, when we think about the uh, strategic design matrix for these living systems and start to apply it to our cities, to our communities. So we're bringing together traditional ideas about demographics and history and culture and the environment and the, and the biosphere, identity and branding, uh, traditional infrastructure, uh, livability technology and constructability, and all these things that are part of cities and, and functional aspects of cities and communities, we think of them as working together and, and creating better communities. So program-based planning is an idea that we're trying to talk uh, more about to explain and contextualize these sorts of things. So at the center of this is, are these public-private partnerships. So how do we most effectively bring together civic policy, public policy, together with entrepreneurs and the skills that they bring to bear, and then also with local corporate citizens and landowners? So bringing those pieces together so that we can do economic development, we can attract and retain talent, we can grow new businesses, and we can solve problems that, create our, that make our cities greener and smarter, more fun, and simply better places to live. And these are some of the pieces that come, in, come into play with that, with the creative culture and uh, creative economy components, social ventures and impact investing to finance some of these entrepreneurs, the smart cities and green cities component, the sharing economy, entrepreneurs and small business support, and then also physical design. So as an urban designer, to see places like the, the uh, container uh, village uh, is, is amazing. It's uh, uh, wonderful examples of uh, new ways of creating uh, space the, and the, the, art, the art of urban space making. This really has to happen on an, on an individual basis for cities and for communities. So there's all these wonderful best practices going on all over the world, but when it comes down to the local community, it has to be customized. So it's going to look different in Vegas, it's going to look different in Iowa City, it's going to look different in Uganda, it's going to look different in Argentina. And with that, it's, it's about making these, these solutions value-based value so that they are, they're unique to the local environment, activities-oriented. So with these sorts of events, but also with, uh, with art and music and, and food, and culture-driven, so that you're, you're promoting the local creativity, lo local culture, and you also have aspirational goals for how to bring in the culture where, where uh, you'd like to see the community to go. And that's always going to be unique for any particular location. So what color is your spaceship? Let's come back to you. So, the challenge is, how are you going to engage in these new models that are being developed with the new technologies we have, the new transparency, the new connectivity with, with the entire world, the new access to information? And you're in a great position to do that, do that because you're, you're at one of the key points on the globe that is being looked to as a model for how to revitalize communities. So with that, I leave it to you to think about what you're going to do and uh, if you'd like to know more, I'd uh, be happy to tell you more about program-based planning and some of the ideas that I talked about. Thank you.